Hey, let's talk about games. Good afternoon, my friend. It's Hydra here today with a semi-inquisitorial video. I tell you what, no, actually, this is a very inquisitorial video. I'm going to be talking a little bit about Dark Heresy, second edition. Now, this is not a video game, so it's a little bit of a different thing for this channel. However, I think it's entirely relevant to 40k, primarily because it's uh, based within 40k, but it's even more relevant to Inquisitor Martyr because I think this this game is actually the best source of lore and information and immersion for being an Inquisitor. It's the best I've found. I've read some of the Eisenhorn books, I've read other books, but this game for me really, really has got my interest within sort of the, the Inquisition. Now, the game itself, you play as an Alakite, and let's first perhaps define what a pen and paper RPG is. Now, this isn't an official definition, this is just my first impressions. Essentially, it follows a Dungeons and Dragons sort of format. You have a games master, a GM, a DM, whatever he wants to be called. He's really the narrator. He will set the scene. He will present your group with challenges. And typically, you would have four players or so. And you will basically be an Inquisitor's retinue of sorts. You'll be the Alakites. You'll be sent on errands or missions, most likely. You may have an Inquisitor jump in with you. You may not. This is all down to the GMDM to do whatever he fancies. Now, in terms of what your group is, you really have so much control over your character. And that, for me, is the first point where you get a bucket ton of information as to what exactly the retinue could comprise of. You could be anything from a rogue trader, a telepathica, a mutant. You could be from the Ministorum, the administrator. Stratum. You could be Imperial Guard, Imperial Navy, Mechanicus, a heretic, a heretic rather. Um, all sorts. You could even be Exercised or an Arbites. There are so many to pick from. Each one of these will come with their own rules. A few little special perks here and there, some aptitudes which basically governs what they're good at, and some starting skills. And then you combine all of this with a combat role. So you could have an, you could have an Arbites that basically is specialised as an assassin. You could have them special as a warrior or a crusader and each of those will then come with their own combat specialism skills etc and then you can also pick a background world which will give you some extra sort of things to sway toward and you end up with a very very detailed character and also some experience to flush them out with a few additional skills talents and traits etc too and then some gear to throw on top of that and oh boy by the time you've actually made the character I really feel like you, you pretty much you're inside the game. You're inside the game. I had to make a spreadsheet myself to actually make this character quote unquote work. Once I realised you can essentially be good at two things or fairly good at three things. It took me about a week, but after learning everything in the book, I have made someone that I think is fucking awesome. Now, let's talk about the actual game, how it works, etc. Because you're probably thinking, well, I don't really like the idea of strictly fantasy games. It's can, even if you're playing long distance like me and my group are, using the website Roll20, it can be um, still an interactive experience where you roll dice. Okay, granted, you have to type slash roll or click a button to roll a dice, but it's the same thing, and you can have a healthy mixture, especially if you negotiate this with your GM of combat experiences, in which case it's going to feel like a... Let's say if you've played Necromunda, it's going to be like an even more in-depth version of Necromunda. You've got half actions, your character can do full actions during a turn, you're going to have a combat order. You can do aim shots, regular shots, full auto shots, semi-auto shots, you can do various stances. There is a lot of depth to what you can do with a character, and it is a very, very nice combat system. It's pretty punishing, pretty damn punishing if you're a squishy and someone gets into melee. Heck, even if you're in power armour and a demon gets into melee with you and hits you and you do not dodge it, you are probably going down like a sack of potatoes. But serves you right for trying to tank a demon. Now, this game, in terms of the combat, I found very rewarding because you have a lot of thought process going on. You have four others that you're trying to coordinate with. I really like that experience. And I would say as a rough rule, this probably, as a rough guide for my group, this is comprised of about 50% of a session. So we have 50% where we're problem solving, still with dice, still with skills. 
So I'm using my deception to try and work our way into establishments. We're trying not to get ourselves killed while we're there by giving away our identity. And it's completely up to you guys. We started off doing third person narratives, saying that I'd approach the guard and I'd present him with my paperwork. And recently we've moved on to more first person narratives. So we, when we uh, say I'll approach the guard, we then pull out a voice and say, excuse me, sir etc. Um, we all have different voices and such and such, but every group is different and likes to do things in a different way. But what I'm leaning towards in this game is everything from the skills to the equipment to the characters to the narrative. If you've got yourself a good DM, this is going to get your head into 40k even more, even more than a good book is, in my view, because you're really going to be thinking about the tools, thinking about using them. It's very different reading a book where Eisenhorn pulls out his vox and starts, you know, dialing in and having a conversation with someone to actually describing that process yourself. Now, granted, th th there is an obstacle to playing this, and that's having a decent group. You've got to have players that are all on the same page, players that can get on with each other and make decisions and converse and solve problems together. If you've got people that bicker rather than do stuff, OK, maybe that can work in an RP session. You could role play that out or maybe it won't. But a good GM, a good DM, someone that really knows their stuff, really knows their bacon, especially with 40k, because the more lore they know, the more immersive they can make it. And you've basically got yourself a load of fun. Something I'd like to know for you guys down below is who here has listened, who here has, sorry, played the game in the past, and also who here would be interested in listening to it again because the plan is we're currently in dress rehearsal stages at the moment i think another three or four weeks most likely of um let's call them dress rehearsal games and we will probably then go into doing a a weekly podcast of sort i will be trying to get a video to go up alongside it we're not just going to sit on webcam we'll try and have some background images and sort of some some mics so you can see who's talking etc i'm hoping we can make things a little bit more sort of interactive than just staring at a static screen for a long time and also rest assured it's not going to be too humorous i've watched a lot of dark heresy stuff and pretty much every group just ten ends up dicking around 90 percent of the time and that's all right it's good fun when you're there but i want to make something that's remotely entertaining for people that want a little bit more 40k lore that they can actually jump in and listen and the aim is for our stories we're going to make it involved with the Inquisitor Martyr storyline. So we're going to actually tie these things together somehow. Obviously no copyright stuff. We'll just, uh, you know, we'll be within the Caligari sector somewhere doing some stuff, fiddling with some buttons, and we may be able to overlap some of the events. I don't know, Random Orc Invasion comes along, Random Orc Invasion comes along in our campaign, something of the sort. We shall see how that all works out but guys if you're interested in perhaps joining us for a dress rehearsal let's call it live stream and i will probably do this as an unlisted maybe get about 10 20 of you guys in just to have a little listen have a little um you know follow along i think it could be pretty fun i'd really like to get some feedback from you guys as to what we can do to sort of improve it polish it obviously it will be unedited it'll be raw it'll be ugly um, but hopefully it'll be interesting at least guys i hope you found this of some interest and i hope you do even if you're not interested in playing dark heresy just get the book just get the book maybe it's downloadable somewhere quite legally of course we shouldn't ever download or pirate anything that would be highly immoral um but i really really think if you're a 40k fan you should have a little read of it there's so much detail within that through describing exactly what a bolt pistol does to the types of ammunition it can use to the various backgrounds and planet types within the within the world and a lot of it a lot of it does overlap with Martyr, so I really think it's a good place to really get your brain into it. Guys, you have yourself a great day, and I'll see you soon. Take care. All the best.